Psalm 139, beginning at the first verse. O Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know when I sit or when I stand. You comprehend my thoughts long before. You discern my path and the places where I rest. You are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, Lord, know it all together. You have compressed me behind and before and have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is wonderful, is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot endure it. We shall go from your spirit, or sh where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave, you are also there. If I spread out my wings towards the morning, or dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely darkness will cover me, and the night will enclose me, the darkness is no darkness with you, but the night is as clear as day. The darkness and the light are both alike. Search me out. O God, and know, know my heart. Put me, to, put me to the proof and know my thoughts. Look well, lest there be a way, any way of wickedness in me, and lead me the way to, sorry, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 13 beginning at the 24th verse. Glory to you Lord Jesus Christ. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field but while everybody was asleep an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers 
and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We come together and ask God's blessing upon us as we listen to these words. And may these words that I speak in the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The Lord searches us out. We do not find God, but God finds us. Just like the rain said to Abby and C. No matter where we look for God, or no matter where we hide from God, it is God who searches us out, who finds us, and who knows us. And the word knowing in the Bible conveys an intimate knowledge, a loving knowledge is like an experience of having an encounter with Jesus, having the experience of being known completely and being loved completely as we are, just as we are. God knows when we sit and stand. It is a continual knowing, a continuous life-giving knowing that gives us our existence. A knowledge so deep that God knows our thoughts even before we consciously think them, even our prayers before we pray them. As Paul says in the book of Romans, the spirit in our hearts prays for us when we don't know how to pray inexpressible in inexpressible groanings or sighs and the god who searches our hearts understands these deepest heartfelt prayers of the spirit it is interesting too how the same word is used of creation just a few verses later in that romans passage all of creation is groaning in an act of childbirth, in an act of giving life, in its yearning to be set free by God. This same groaning, this same yearning to be set free are the prayers the Spirit prays through us. This knowledge doesn't change us as we walk through the valley of death, that is when our knowledge becomes clearer. And then we will say with the psalmist, this is just too wonderful to believe. God is behind and before. We are encompassed, enveloped. God is above and below. God is inside and outside. And we can certainly say with Jacob, Truly God is in this place, and I never knew. How sad are those words? Truly God is in this place, and I never knew. How often are we like Jacob, not knowing the God who knows us? How often is God there waiting to be responded to, and we blithely go past? How many bushes aflame with the fire of God's love do we not notice because we are too busy, too tired, 
too noisy, too disorganized. There is a hint of regret in Jacob's words. This same regret we know if we are too busy to acknowledge God. But in Jacob's words, there is also the wonder of discovery. It is not a presence which has been lost. It is the presence which has finally been noticed. Jacob made an altar of stones and oil to mark that place where he realized God's closeness to him, God's promise, God's complete knowing of him. I wonder, did Jacob continue to be aware of God in the different places he traveled? I wonder, do we? Do we make the spirit sad because we are not attuned to God's music? Or does the realization of God's closeness make us want to sing and dance and celebrate like the psalmist? Do our hearts thrill because the God of the universe is inside us, has searched us out, knows us through and through, has given us the spirit of love, turning us into living temples of God's continuous presence? Are we grateful that even when we try to hide from God because of our humanness, our sinfulness, our apathy, that God doesn't give up on us. Your hand shall lead me. Your right hand shall hold me. I see myself as a lamb in the shepherd's embrace. I see the shepherd shaking his head because of all the trouble I have caused him but I still feel the tenderness of his embrace, the gentleness of his caring, the celebration that he has searched me out and has found me and is keeping me safe. God is the great lover. God has covenanted themselves to us. And even when we go astray, God still searches us out the hound of heaven is relentless and never gives up even if we do. My darkness is not darkness for God. My sinfulness is not beyond God's forgiveness. There is a cross and there is a salvation which has ensured that darkness will never prevail. And that is why in the parable of the darnel that we've just heard Tony read, the weeds are not pulled up straight away. God is happy to chase us, to give us time to change, to give us time to once again realize that God is in this place when we never knew or even thought possible because that place is us. If the weeds had been pulled up earlier, that would have been the end. But God's loving, chasing, and creative knowledge can change weeds like you and me into fruitful vines. God's love and forgiveness and the gift of the Spirit make us a new creation. The weeds are turned into flowers. God's light shines in us, deep within us, and has shone within us since our earliest moments. The psalm continues to realize the wonder of God's love, the wonder of the spirits indwelling, the wonder that this old clay pot is actually a shining temple of God's presence. God knows us and loves us. Because of this, we can love ourselves 
we can love each other. There is a sense that nothing can be hidden from God because God is more aware of us than we are of ourselves. Once again, the psalmist is in awe of the greatness of God. He realizes that it is too much to comprehend, too wonderful to believe that our humanness does not give cause for concern, but for celebration. We would need eternity to understand God's goodness, God's greatness, God's uncompromising love. I guess there's a smile on God's face. And God says back to each of us, you will have an eternity to celebrate my love because of the salvation won for you by my son on the cross. The psalmist finishes the psalm by putting himself completely in God's care. The lamb has jumped into the shepherd's arms. The weeds have allowed themselves to be recreated into life-giving fruit. The spirit and all of creation continue to pray in groans and sighs too deep to understand. But each time we open our hearts to God, then each time all of creation is that bit closer to being set free. Free to be with God. Free to be the eternal creatures of, that God wishes us to be. Free to sing the music of God's consuming love. God's knowledge of us through and through. And God's imminent closeness. Let the words of this hymn warm your heart and celebrate your spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. sea 
still I'd find you 